So, uh, well, I'm Alessandro, as you know, and I'm going to cover this little lecture. So we are still in chapter two, which is uh, to talk about the knowledge-based model of design. And we're going to focus on the end of the chapter 2.4, which is design spaces, and the beginning of uh, chapter 2.5, which is redefining spaces of designs. So this is the division of all the paragraphs. So we start talking about the design interpreter and then how to represent design knowledge and the design processes. And then we talk about the knowledge acquisition, so how to acquire the knowledge we need. And in the end, just a little introduction on the innovat innovative design. So, okay. So design interpreter. Um, Basically, when we want, if we want to design anything, like an object or an, an artifact, we need to fulfill two requirements. One, we have to respect the syntactic rules. And second, we have to satisfy the desired set of performances. So, for example, if we want to design a smartphone, we have to understand what makes this a smartphone. So, for example, the option that we, have, we can call people we can use internet and so on. And then we have to uh, satisfy the desired performances. For example, the dimension has to be uh, small enough to, I don't know, fit in your pocket, for example, or uh, has to be, have to be, if, be like a, have a big screen so you can, I don't know, watch videos or so on. And to design um, an artifact, what we have to do is, first of all, to generate the components, because each object we, we design uh, is made of many components. And then, by means of actions, we, um, we have to gener we generate different configurations of these components. And then we analyze all these configurations, and we test them, and we see which one satisfy the, um, the desired set of performances. So um, when we talk about design an object, we have to start about how to get the knowledge that we need in order to uh, design this object. And the knowledge, uh, to capture the knowledge, uh, we can do it uh, creating a general design. So you just start in doing a general design of the object. And then we... Um, we match. We try to match like the um, the requirements of these the, this, uh, artifacts, uh, trying all the various configurations as explained in the previous previous slide. And when we uh, find the right configuration, basically we have we know that this is the correct one. So that's how we get the knowledge. And so basically, uh, learning every time trying different configuration and find the right one, we just improve our knowledge and then we can generate new rules for, for the future. So um, the design process. Basically, uh, it starts all from actions and it's ba it consists of the first the selection of the actions we, we need to do, then to and the planification, so we have to planify the order of the action that we, I mean, in which order we, have, we do all the actions, and the end, the execution of this action, because we have to execute in order to design the product. So basically, the, this, all these actions we, we use to design the product are those who describe the, the object itself. So um, after that, we just try to uh, make like see more deeply like how it, how it works the knowledge acquisition which is basically a really important subject in this in this big chapter so uh, first of all uh, the knowledge is an implicit procedure so is something that you coming is like hidden so you you learn like doing you you do stuff you you um, you work on the on the design of your product and working you, you learn always more and 
but this knowledge can be explicitated set in the rules. So as we saw in, the, um, in this scheme that we, I think we saw this like really many, many times, um, basically the explicitation is the induction. So we analyze the different cases. Uh, for example, we have to design uh, a phone. We, we see all the previous phone in the design and like seeing the, all the cases and the results we arrive finally we arrive to the to the main rule so in this case we ex explicitate the knowledge we have um, as i said before uh, we acquire the knowledge from the past examples and the um, existing designs can be used in different ways for example you can use by imitation so I want to make a new smartphone I take this one and I just do a, I imitate this one or I can use existing designs as a prototypes so I take one in the past and I use as a prototype trying to see like how to make a new one or simply as a source of knowledge so I analyze this one and say okay I see the, the weight I see the dimension and so I make a study and then I apply all that I learn, all these things that I analyze, I learn to make a new product or simply as examples. So I just analyze all different cases and take them as examples in order to do a, my product. Um, to, when we talk about knowledge acquisition, we need to find an approach to get this knowledge. And basically, during the years, the, the approach changes. And in, I think in the, in the 80s, the approach was really different from the one we use right in nowadays. And was based on, as you can see in, in this picture here, there was um, uh, an engineer. And his job was to uh, basically um, take the, um, the knowledge from the expert and put it in a code in order to like, uh, save this knowledge. And then at the same time, uh, like a physician, so like a person who works on the field, uh, analyze the, the results he gets and he put in a, in a document that then is being, he has to be translated in a natural language and then this is, has to be converted to the, the code made by the, the engineer. But uh, then they, people realize that this method is, has different problems, actually has two main problems. First of all is that uh, it's required uh, expert, like an engineer and an expert, and so people who are really well prepared and also in a matter of cost, because you have to pay more people and people more, people more prepared cost more money. And since the design is made by companies, the purpose of the company is to uh, maximize their profits. So if they can save money, it's something that they will do like really happily. And the second one is that the natural language is processed without human assistance. So basically, there's a problem that can be errors in, in this phase between like the natural language and the code. Since they're not a human, an expert who work on there, on that, can there can be like mistakes, so there can be problems with the with the acquisition of the knowledge itself. So um, it's, it was decided to create a new approach, which is illustrated in this picture. And in this one, uh, Basically, it's develop uh, knowledge extraction tools that extract the knowledge from from the documents, and this is like uh, let's say managed by the editor, who is the one who has to uh, check that all the um, this all this works. So now there's no more like a, a, a code um, invented by uh, an engineer. So, and there's just a more simple language. And in this way, 
we don't need and we don't need no more like to have an expert like uh, in informatics, but we can just use a, uh, an editor that can make all this work and like acquire all the knowledge we need. So we talk about uh, how to acquire knowledge, but we didn't talk about actually what we can define as knowledge. So we just do a step back, and this is more like a kind of philosophical work, but it's just to understand a little bit how we, we define the knowledge itself. So basically, um, to understand the knowledge, there's a correlation between what we want to know, so the object, object we want to analyze, and how it, we can express this object, so the language we use. And to do this, um, we can use the triangle of reference, which is this one. And this is like a model who correlate uh, an object to the linguistic symbols that it represents. So for example, if we take the uh, orange, this is the linguistic term, this can symbolize the fruit or the color, and it's like the concept. And this can be referred to the object itself that is exactly or the orange or the color. So in this, in this triangle, we can also see that uh, why it's so important to uh, understand how uh, the knowledge works, because there can be uh, like misunderstandings. And to, to finish, uh, we talk about the innovative design. So basically, as we said, a really important part of the um, design is uh, the knowledge design, so the knowledge of all the previous cases and that we can use to design a new product. And when we design something uh, new, we always get more knowledge. And getting more knowledge uh, modifies the, the rules of the previous one. So basically, for example, if we still talk about the phone, like 10 years ago, the phone was really different than this one. It was just made for calls and was smaller. And the we didn't need a big screen, but just a little screen because there was space for buttons, for example. But then when someone decided to start with a touch screen, all the knowledge we have to like evolve and try a new different uh, type of design. So basically, um, this knowledge is a continuous uh, redefinition of the knowledge every time. And I think is, that's it. Uh, if you have some questions or comments. OK. I close here. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs>